Good afternoon, good afternoon, uh, Brian Wright, Helen Chang. Uh, this is all about the confluence of Silicon Valley and Hollywood. What we will discuss is video games, whether it's on your console, PC, mobile, tablet, meeting the silver screen. But if you allow me, I want to do some audience participation so that we can just check where we are. By show of hands, audience, who here watches film or television? Oh, come on. <laughs> right. By show of hands, how many of you play video games? And this year, to the best of your knowledge, how many of you have watched a piece of television or film based on a video game? Exactly so. Thank goodness we're in the right place. <laughs> um, which leads me to start with a really good question. What do you do for a living? Uh, Helen, we'll start with you. Well, unlike, I think, popular perception, I don't get to sit in my office and play Minecraft all day. Um, but our team is responsible for growing and expanding the franchise, and more importantly, to be stewards of the brand. And you, Brian? Well, unlike Helen, I actually do get paid. To... We're going to get into the backstory about this in a second. Please keep going, yeah. <laughs> no, I was literally saying I do get paid to paid to play League of Legends because at Riot, they really, really expect you to understand the game and understand players. Your background was you did seven years at Netflix. I did seven years at Netflix, so I'm the film TV guy at Riot. But you were not a video games guy at Netflix. Exactly, exactly. But then Riot were like, do you want to come and work for us? Exactly. So I got a call from Shauna Spenley, who used to be at Netflix with me. Um, and she was the new president of entertainment over at Riot and was asking me if I would be interested in coming over, that they had very lofty ambitions about um, building the IP into film and television and um, started having those conversations. And then she shared with me early cuts of Arcane. This is before it launched on Netflix and I was literally blown away. Uh, I had nothing actually to do with it being on Netflix. It was just a weird coincidence that I had been at Netflix and then right. went to Riot and then Riot sold it to Netflix. Um, but I was so absolutely blown away by the quality of the storytelling and by the uh, unbelievable direction and, the, and just the quality of the animation. I was like, wow, this is any indication of what you want to do within the scripted narrative space, like count me in. And, and Helen, you know, I, I, I get the role now, you know, Minecraft, and we will get into how it, the universe has expanded. But in your career, you know, you've been on product and you, you've been in video games. In, in the early days, were you playing a lot of video games as part of your job? I still get to play a lot of video okay, games. Just to clarify. Yeah. Um, I, I'm really excited about this. On, on the Bloomberg Technology Show, we have covered these big titles. I think Lucas was on stage last night talking about Super Mario Bros, right? But there are some of you with respect to your age and this audience that when you say <laughs> Super Mario Bros, you guys think 1993. Super Mario Bros. Right, right. Thank you. Some of the stars in that film. Liars, all of you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, so here's the question: Which video games make for good film and television? And and that's a broad question, but that is your job now to think about uh, daily, Helen. Uh, and and there's one work piece of work you've got in particular, which we'll get to. Yeah, I think gaming and entertainment go hand in hand. You know, when Minecraft started, it was a small independent game. It's evolved into a multi-billion dollar franchise. We're really excited to expand into entertainment because um, we think of it as a great opportunity to reach new audiences and bring them into the franchise, even if they're not going to play the game. There is a Minecraft movie. Well, let, there is a Minecraft movie. There is. Please expand. Um, it's under production right now. Um, we're really excited to be working with Warner Brothers. Um, we have the movie that's upcoming. We're working with Jason Momoa. Um, it's a little bit delayed right now because of yes. all of everything that's going on. That's largely because of the pandemic. <laughs> Definitely. Please continue. Um, <laughs> but we're really excited because I think it's going to be um, just another expression of Minecraft that brings in a whole new audience into the franchise. We're hoping it's the start of many different entertainment offerings that we'll have with Minecraft. Is the idea that whatever the, the end result that the movie looks like, that it's recognizable to kind of the generations of players that were playing Minecraft across different mediums? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think one of the challenges that we've had is 
you know, Minecraft isn't known for the highest fidelity graphics. Um, so as we were trying to imagine what the art style for this movie was, you know, I just saw um, some creative of that this week. I think we're really excited, and I think our um, fans are going to well, be Well, Jason Momoa might not sign on if you pixelate his face. <laughs> uh, but you've been through this, well, I'm, I'm assuming, I, I mean, I'm not an actor, but you, you've been through this process with Arcane. So, so he Helen's going through it now. You've published, essentially. Uh, what was your learning from that, taking League of Legends and doing that? Yeah, you know, it was interesting, and there was a lot of nerves at Riot pre-launch of Arcane because, you know, it was highly anticipated. They'd spent six years making it, um, and there's an extremely sort of, like, obsession with excellence at the company. But they didn't know, obviously, how it was going to land until it's out there in the world. And the... Um, the response was overwhelming. The player community just like lost their minds. And the way to answer your question, just one, one question ago, which is like, what do I think makes for a good adaptation? Yes. Um, for me, it really all comes back to character. And, um, and that's what Christian and Alex, who created, you know, they were actually rioters, internal guys. Um, one was from the champion team, one was on the music team, and they, they actually created Arcane. But they, they found, they, they focused the spotlight on a couple of champions, uh, which we, we call them champions, their characters, Jinx and Vi, really at the center of this thing. And um, they're not just like running around, like blowing up things for the sake of blowing up things. Like there's reasons, like deep, deep seated personal reasons. There's a story. There's a story. But the story didn't necessarily, you know, whereas ours is not a narrative game, right? Unlike Naughty Dog, like Last of Us, that's a narrative game. Like League of Legends is a five on five MOBA. It's a 45 minute fantasy basketball matchup, right? So, um, but we do have supporting literature and supporting website and short stories that we publish that to give you a sense more of like these, what these characters and champions are up to. But so like, but they had a lot of license to go create that story and create that narrative. Um, but they stayed deeply authentic to who those champions were. You, you're talking about development and production. So I'm gonna take an opportunity to bring up this session's poll. Um, which I'd love the audience to participate in. We can, we can recap at the end. The story of the year, I guess, for both video games industry and, 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 and entertainment broadly has been AI. So I just want to pose this question. Which area of gaming will AI technologies have the most impact? Vote on it. We'll discuss it uh, as a group at the end. But the, the question that I have for you, Helen, is what are the differences and similarities in development and production of a Minecraft movie? versus development of a video game. Is it the same, or is, it, is there a stark difference? I actually think it's quite different. Um, when we think about games, and especially how we develop Minecraft, um, you know, when you're building a game, you're putting something out there oftentimes when it's not fully done, especially a service game like Minecraft. And so you know, we build our game with our community. We put something out there, they give us feedback, we continue to iterate on that. It's almost like if in TV you were to put out a pilot and kind of you know, get community feedback and then decide where you want to take that series going forward. That's kind of how we think about game development for us. Um, with, the, with, the, with the movie, you know, we really have to pick a story and a narrative that isn't going to be the only story of Minecraft, but is one that we hope is going to be fun and entertaining and get people excited about the potential of what else we could do in entertainment. Uh, Brian, you, you brought this issue up about the response to Arcane, and it makes me think about expectation. So, you know, especially games like Minecraft or League of Legends, the players have very strong opinions I have discovered in Reddit forums. <laughs> yeah, the um, what's the risk there? For sure. Listen, like IP, like, you know, there's a lot of talk in Hollywood right now about IP and, yes. and folks are chasing IP and it's, and I understand why there's, it comes with a core evangelizing audience and that's great. It can potentially give you a nice big leg up. It also comes with extremely high expectations and, and fan, fandom and passion. And if you underdeliver, or you do something that's not authentic, um, or you do something that just is, you know, if the player community or the audience community rejects the organ, it's ugly, right? And frankly, you can do more harm than good. So that's why, like, just, you know, with my Riot hat on, like, we're so, 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 like, we're not playing a volume game. We want to be so careful, so bespoke, make one incredible thing at a time to make sure that we're getting it right. Minecraft, you know, it's, it, uh, you can either say, like the Super Mario Brothers, 
there was a 1993 film, and now there's a 2023 film, 22-23 film. You know, I, I, my question is whether you feel that Minecraft already has a legacy, or if you're a young franchise. Because there are many, many players around the world that have been playing for a really long time. And so you are going across generations if you bring out a movie that you're trying to reach. Minecraft's going to be 15 years old next year. Um, and I think one of the things when I talk about being a steward of the brand, you know, we've really had to think about how we expand and grow over the last 15 years. And I think there's two things that are really important. Um, one is how do we nurture the community? The community has been such a strong force for our success, you know, because we've built the game alongside them. Um, and then how are we intentional about how we grow and expand? You know, Brian talked about authenticity. Um, in the beginning days of Minecraft, we didn't have a lot of consumer products or licensed things that you could go buy out in the store. Um, and as we tried to figure out how we grew that business, we didn't want to do it in an, in a, an authentic way. We wanted to make sure that all of the toys that we put out, all of the t-shirts that we put out, had custom designs, were of the quality that we care about inside Minecraft. And that meant that it took more time for us to get to where we are today. Um, but that's been a big pillar of what we think is important in our brand. As you develop the movie, are you taking input from the players of the game as you did as you develop the game? We're taking, we're taking input from some of our creators who have been a large part of our success. So making sure that as they read the script, do they think it's authentic to our brand? We are taking time. It's, I think it's been eight years um, since we originally started the deal with Warner Brothers. Um, so like making sure that we take a lot of care, because this is our first foray into entertainment for Minecraft. And, and is there a date for the movie, a broad target date for release? There is, and I think you know we've got to wait and see and see what happens. Just the three of us. <laughs> see what's going on um, and whether or not we stay on track, but that's the goal. OK, great. Uh, Brian, Helen has taken the bulk of the easy questions. Uh, Valorant movie, when's it coming out? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to watch that. Uh, listen, Valorant is incredible, and it's a bit of a rocket ship from a game perspective. Yes. And, um, I absolutely believe one day that we'll be building stuff. Well, as part of your day job, you must be discussing it internally. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, but, but you know, Anna Donlin runs Valorant Studios from the yes. game side. She's fantastic, and, and we talk all the time. And, like, I think, again, it's, it's a really young game. So she wants to make sure that it's, like, you know, it's walk, then run, then sprint, and then, like, and then one day we'll talk about film TV. What, what I find interesting about the sort of digital world and the metaverse we can talk about in a second is there's a lot of like merchandise out there it's yeah. massive like minecraft in particular how do you think about merchandise um as a kind of i guess is it a pillar alongside video game movie merchandise or does it take a back seat Oh, it absolutely doesn't take a back seat. I think right now it's in a really forward seat. You know, just yesterday I was in the airport right behind a kid who's wearing his Minecraft backpack and his Minecraft shirt. It's just an expression, a way for our fans to express their love for the brand. I think for us what's been important is making sure that when you have hundreds of millions of people playing your game, you really have to have merchandise that caters to all of these different audiences within that. So how are we geographically relevant and making sure we're partnering with great brands in countries around the world? Um, how are we make, making sure we think about demographics, not just kids, but you know the whole age range that plays our game? Um, that's been important to us, and that's why you see us partnering with everything from high-end Burberry to yes. you know making sure that our T-shirts are in Walmart and Target for all of the kids to buy. And Arcane is a recent example, but was there any uh, throughput to, to sales of merchandise based on taking a game to streaming or the silver screen? Yeah, I mean, the way Riot thinks about it, I mean, for sure there's a like a, a absolute big consumer products muscle there, and Arcane was a nice big pulse point for them, and certainly the second season will be as well. And right now we're, like, Worlds is in November in Korea, and so that's always a big high point of the year for our consumer products business, Worlds being the esports finals. Yes. Um, but, you know, I think about that almost even more holistically. So it's, of course, it's consumer products, but, like, we think about, like, how do we make every day better to be a player? So it's consumer products. Like we spent, we, we really lean in and create incredible music at Riot, which the players love. Um, so the, the, there's an entire ecosystem that uh, there's in-game events. Like there's, there's uh, obviously there's digital goods as well. Right. So it's, it's it, that's, that's like our job is like- You've taken us to player. soundtrack. I mean, I think about a game I've been playing again recently, Cyberpunk, which has a pretty distinct soundtrack. If I go to Spotify, well, I find Minecraft, 
you know, themed music? Will I, will, is that something that you guys think about proactively? Because in gameplay, you know, you're there like, yeah. I don't think it. you would find it today, but I think you would find it really soon. Oh, so it's coming. When? <laughs> <laughs> We've talked a lot about pretty much one direction travel, video game to film and television. What about in reverse? There are examples of that, Hogwarts Legacy, which was great fun to play. Um, but what do you both think that the movie industry or film and television industry can learn from the video games industry? What is it, Helen, that you think you do pretty well? I think there's two things that have really been um, paramount to Minecraft's success. I talked about the community and how we've built the game alongside the community with their feedback. I think the second is just embracing the ecosystem around your IP. And for us, that's really the Minecraft creators who have helped make Minecraft as successful as it is. Um, you know, I think it was two years ago that YouTube announced we had one trillion views of Minecraft content on their platform. Um, you know, for us, you know, then it becomes about how do we bring them trillion. back. Trillion, that's wow. right, trillion. Do you feel um, pressure now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's impressive. So then, you know, it's our responsibility is how do we bring all of that energy and bring it back into the game? You, you have sat on both sides of the table, literally, Netflix seven years, yep. and then over to Riot. Did you walk into Riot um, in Santa Monica and go, wow, or, or do you think I, I can change some things here based on my experience at Netflix? You know, I entered um, Riot with a lot to learn. I'd never been in the gaming industry, um, so I was super curious about the way they did things. And, and you know, one of the things that is most remarkable to me about Riot, and listen, my, my uh, vantage point of the gaming industry is truly just through my experience at Riot, right? So I'm talking about a one anecdote example here, but Riot, as I said earlier, is obsessed with excellence. So if you, you were asking me what's the lesson that I think Hollywood could take, you know, Riot will, in Hollywood, you often are anchoring around dates. And so it's like, hey, we need this by Christmas of 26, or you know, like, and you're backing into things. Yes. Um, Riot just would never do that in a million years. And it, I understand the reasons why you do do it in film and TV, but they wouldn't, because they would immediately feel that it is sacrificing something from a quality perspective. So this brings us back to the poll question. Um, and we'll try and sort of tackle this AI in video games and film and television. If we can bring the poll back up, what is the biggest impact that AI technology will have? Um, and the results, please. Development time. I'm not surprised by that. Think about Starfield. It took seven years. I, I realize Minecraft is, has been out for a long time, and now it's in different iterations, right? But what is your take on that? That, you know, do you guys want to look at non-video game uh, franchising of Minecraft and move faster? Or do you, and do you think AI will help you in doing that? You know, for our team, it's really not so much about the speed of development, and I know our players would hate that I said that, um, but it's really about the quality. And we wanna make sure that, you know, I, I, have, I have a hard time believing that a lot of storytelling and the creative aspects of building right. a game you think are gonna be replaced. Thing. I think it is a human thing. Um, and maybe AI can help augment that process, but I don't think it's gonna replace the human element of storytelling. The world that we dream up is a generative AI tool where it's text to world building, right? You say, I want to have this world with these features, bam, done. It doesn't take all the rendering and, and design. What's your attitude towards that as somebody that's also trying to take video game content to the other screen? Yeah, listen, I mean, I, I and we're in the early innings still, obviously, with AI. Um, I think it's a great tool um, for creative folks. Um, and we, you know, my creative teams use it to inspire themselves or to do little fun little projects that they want to imagine something really quickly. But the, the real heavy lifting of creative, I, I just, fundamentally agree with Helen that I, I do believe humans will continue to drive that. You know, and will there be efficiencies built into elements of production, um, whether in animation or otherwise, like probably over time? I, I don't know exactly know what that looks like, but. The, the, we're, we're running short on time, but as part of my, my research and, and getting ready for this discussion, I, I discovered uh, Minecraft Ninja Turtles. So whether you pixelate <laughs> Jason Momoa's face or not, you, you did cube up the, the little green guys. How big a part is that of the strategy, taking Minecraft and doing Minecraft XYZ? 
Yeah, I think it's a big part of our strategy. You know, I, there are so many communities and great IP that I know many of you have worked on. And, you know, I think we have the opportunity with Minecraft to marry those audiences together, um, use it as an opportunity, whether it's Ninja Turtles, whether it's SpongeBob. These are all things that have manifested themselves into Minecraft, and those communities have found a way to be in our game and, and you know, really enjoy the IP that they love. And based on your time at Riot, are there properties you think, okay, we can JV here with someone? Uh, outside properties? Yeah. Yeah, that's not the focus. The focus is really like, again, like turning that spotlight on areas of our map that we think are super special and are in our champions. So I think what, it's like in world, in canon. To finish, I want to ask you both, what was the first video game that you remember playing, Helen? Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt. <laughs> Yeah, um, I had a ColecoVision, okay. um, like, which I got, probably got Christmas of 82 maybe, and um, Zaxxon, does anyone here play Zaxxon? <laughs> it was like, you, you steered a plane. I don't even know, but yeah, that was an early ColecoVision game. Uh, Brian Wright, Helen Chang, we wanted to collide Silicon Valley and Hollywood, we collided <laughs> video games in Hollywood. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers, thank here you. Here in Hollywood. <laughs>